Hello my little friends. Uh, today I'm going to analyze the uh, possible effects of various planetary transits in 2023 around the zodiac in relation to your sign, which is a fire sign and it is the fifth sign of the zodiac and it is the sun's sign. That means that the sun is at its strongest during the period when Leo is prevailing. And that is, of course, during the summer season in the northern hemisphere of the Earth. So let's begin with an important transit that is going to have a very strong effect in your life, which has already began, actually, that effect, in 2022. Today is the 18th of August 2022. So I always make those videos much earlier so that everybody can uh, watch them uh, if they want to, of course, to get prepared for the um, influences of the various planets around the zodiac. So Jupiter, that's the planet I want to talk to you about first. Because Jupiter has transited and is still today in Aries. But it is in retrograde motion, meaning that from our point of view on Earth, it seems that Jupiter is going backwards, which is not, of course, the case. Now, uh, that has a meaning. It seems to lower uh, the energy of the planet. So it's like if Jupiter was on standby, more or less, but it's not in reality. So while it is in uh, Aries, which is going to last until first in 2022, until the 28th of October, and then it's going to begin again on the 20th of December, and it will last until the 16th of May, 2023. And that will be the second transit of Jupiter in Aries. Now, Aries, you may know, is a fire sign as well. So, because it is a fire sign, it is said to be in positive relationship with your sign. Fire and fire mix easily together. Right? You get more fire. Now, Jupiter represents evolution, progress, success, luck, opportunities, everything that is actually quite good to obtain what we want, to obtain even at times more than what we want and what we aim at. So that configuration is going to last, as I said earlier, until the 16th of May. That's very important that you take note of that because right now Jupiter is still in Aries, as I said, uh, and it is in Aries since the 11th of May 2022. So whatever you're going to do until the end of October uh, will probably have a lot of important repercussions and consequences when Jupiter starts to transit again in, uh, in this sign, in Aries. Now, Aries, from your sign, is number nine. You see, yours would be number one. It is the uh, sign of reference. And then we go around and write all the signs. So, you see, Aries is number nine. Taurus is number ten. And there we go. We've got the twelve signs all together. But it's important because that means that it is symbolically, of course, linked to the ninth house. And that ninth house represents everything that is official. Uh, everything that probably also depends on your philosophical approach to life. It also represents your eventual or possible connection with far distant places, foreign countries, or foreign people, 
or foreign affairs. Um, long distance travels are also represented by house number nine. And it also represents studies. So if you're studying, you will probably notice that during this period, uh, you have more drive, more motivation, and perhaps as well, a better chance to obtain that diploma or certificate or whatever you are uh, studying for. So that's quite interesting and very positive. But it is going to change because Jupiter, once it finishes its transit in Aries, it will transit in Taurus. And that transit is going to last for a year. So it's going, it's going to last until May 2024. Jupiter in Taurus will have a different influence, which you will need to take into consideration. And I would say perhaps to get prepared for. But before I finish with Jupiter in Aries, I also wish to, to mention the fact that Charon is in Aries as well. That asteroid has been in Aries since 2018. It's a long transit. It is going to end in 2026. Charon represents everything that has to do with health. Your health as such and health in another sense like your financial health, perhaps your professional health, whatever that is, Jupiter uh, associated with Charon in Aries, of course, is in harmony with your sign. So that means that if you have an, a health issue uh, to, you know, to, uh, uh, to look after or to, to treat, uh, it is very probable that this configuration, this cohabitation of Jupiter and Charon in Aries will help you uh, get you know, over the uh, eventual problem that you may have or to also protect, preserve and perhaps enhance your good health as much as possible. And that good health may be, of course, your physical health, your perhaps psychological health or emotional health, sentimental health, whatever it is. It all depends then on your personal birth chart. And if you have uh, a personal birth chart, you have a different, perhaps, perspective of this configuration, but it will still have an influence uh, according to what I say, but it will also have an influence according to your chart. So if you want to have more information about that, of course, don't hesitate to visit our website. You see it is uh, mentioned here, up there, and just browse for the information that will give you access to various services that we offer on the, on the website. So anyway, once Jupiter transits in Taurus, its influence is going to change. First of all, because a planet transiting a sign is influenced by the sign in which it is transiting. So Jupiter in Aries gives a lot more motivation because Aries is a fire sign, because it is the first sign. But once it goes through Taurus, the energy is going to change because Taurus is an Earth sign. So it's going to be much more direct, directed to um, your financial affairs, for example, your financial situation or status, uh, your material interest in life as well are going to be enhanced. So Jupiter in Taurus is not creating that blue link, which is a positive or um, harmonious link. It is creating a discordant one because this is simply in accordance to the fact that both elements, fire and earth, do not mix easily. Try and you'll see what happens. So cohabitation between the two is not 100% guaranteed to work out. But it doesn't mean that a Leo person cannot live with a Taurus one. Of course, it's just about the elements. So when a planet like Jupiter 
uh, transits a sign like Taurus, in discordance with Leo, it tends to increase the energy of that planet, but tenfold, like. It's more difficult to control it. And because Jupiter represents progress, evolution, and the success that we may be uh, wanting uh, to achieve in some area or other, of course, this transit may make you a little bit in, on the exaggeration side. And if you exaggerate, if you are too optimistic, if you are too ambitious as well, you may find that it becomes much more difficult for you to deal with everything that will need to be done while you are in that situation, in that state of mind, more or less. So it may be important during that period, which is going to last for a year, so it's not a short time, uh, to uh, try and control your desire, your ambitions, try to be perhaps less opportunistic as well. Because this is happening in the 10th sign from yours, you see, number 10. And of course it is linked to the 10th house. It represents your social status, your professional status, your career, your projects, your ambitions, your relations with um, authority, whatever that authority may be. It could be family authority, it could be professional authority or any kind of other authority. And when Jupiter transits this area, according to your sign, it will make you more ambitious for sure. And it could, of course, it could create, it could trigger uh, very interesting opportunities to reach a higher level. You will have the potential to uh, make and do what needs to be made or done to progress. But it is going to become perhaps a load uh, on your shoulders that you need to assess before you get involved in uh, any project that is sufficiently important to become a burden. So, you know, think about that and if you prepare yourself, especially during the transit of Jupiter in Aries, if you are well prepared when Jupiter begins its transit in Taurus, and when it does transit through the sign for a year or so, uh, then you will be able to manage and to succeed. Also, in Taurus, another planet is transiting, Uranus. Now, you can watch the video that I made last year for 2022, that I made in 2020 for 2021 and so on, because Uranus is in Taurus since 2018. And it is going to remain in Taurus until 2025-26. Now, the fact that it is in Taurus implies that you are going through a period of great changes. And such changes occur at the highest level in your life, because it is the 10th sign, it is house number 10, it is the, the summit, you know, the zenith. And it means that the changes that have occurred since 2018 are of utmost importance, of course, and they are going to have a drastic influence on the course of your life at various levels and in various areas of your life once again, depending on your birth chart and the orientation of the houses in that chart and the other planets and so on. All the configurations have to be taken into, consider into consideration to assess what actually the energy of Uranus and Jupiter together may produce in your life in 2023 from May onwards until 2024, 
month of May as well. So Uranus change, what is it that you perhaps want to change? It is probably a very, very drastic, important change. Because as I said earlier, Uranus is transiting the 10th sign from yours. So the 10th house, which is the house in a chart that is at the top of it. So the top is perhaps what you want to reach. Some sort of summit, a higher level in any case. Or maybe you want to change your career, the orientation of your life. And you need to change perhaps the way you deal with what needs to be done or said and made to attain that summit. This is very important because Jupiter is going to increase the energy of Uranus. That's Jupiter's function. Every time Jupiter comes in contact with another planet, the other planet seems to be magnified in its own personal energy and meaning, symbolism. So uh, Uranus represents change and change is going to be greatly emphasized in your life at the highest level in 2023 until May 2024. And what you will achieve will of course depend on your own desire, on your own will, on your own drive, on your own motivation, and as well on the manner with which you will uh, attend to various opportunities that will must certainly come forward. So there will be a need for you to keep on the lookout for whatever can help you achieve the greatest results because you will be able to for sure and you may find yourself very very high in the sense that this configuration can actually trigger something very unexpected which you will have to deal with afterwards. You know, success is maybe something that you are striving for, but once you have it, it's sometimes very difficult to deal with success. So it can turn against you. And what I mean by that is that if you are not prepared for that success, and if it does happen, what are you going to do to uh, handle it, you know, to uh, control the situation, to make the best of it, to make it last as well? That's a question that I ask you. But if you have that question to ask me or someone else at Ablas, then visit our website once again and you will find the information to order a reading or ask for a uh, a uh, simple answer to a question that you may have. What else would I like to tell you? Well, I'll tell you about Saturn. Now, Saturn is still, at the moment, in Aquarius. It's been in, in Aquarius since 2020, since March 2020. And it has really settled in Aquarius in December 2020. Since then, it is transiting the sign. And Aquarius is a cross from yours. You see? It is the sign opposite yours. Now, this is a fire sign, right? Your sign is a fire sign. And across there, Aquarius is an air sign. Air and fire mix together very well. In actual fact, fire cannot burn without air. And air is very cold without the heat of fire, which is the heat of the sun. If you were born under this sign, you have the sun somewhere in Leo. And while Saturn transits in Aquarius, it creates an opposition, but the opposition is useful because the opposition makes you f think and perhaps modify your way of doing things. Just like in a government, 
the opposition is there to say to the government, no, 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 you don't do that, it's no good, do this. And then they discuss and so on. So the opposition is very useful, but it's a pain in the neck at times. And Sajjan can really be a pain in the neck. Because that area here is the seventh one, which is house seven, representing your alter ego. Now, who is your alter ego in your life? Usually it is your partner your wife, your husband, um, but the alter ego is also the way you deal with your own image, how you see it, how you appreciate it. And as a Leo, because the sun is Leo's planet, although it's not a planet, but we call it a planet in astrology, um, it is very strong and it represents your ego. So a strong ego is facing Saturn, representing a type of false limitation and perhaps dissatisfaction that goes with limitations. Of course, if you can't do or can't achieve what you want to achieve in life, uh, it is frustrating and it makes you angry, nervous, and so on. But Saturn is there to also show that during the transit across from your sign, it is implying that you have some work to do, some efforts to make, so that you can um, understand better and control and perhaps achieve a much stronger bond with perhaps someone. It may be a private relationship, it can be a professional one, or any type of important relationship. But it's also the way, the manner in which you deal in your head with the idea of being in a relationship. So even though you may not be in a relationship, you still have an opinion about what it is. And uh, Saturn has made it perhaps very important for you to, uh, to think about it, to deal with certain obstacles and difficulties in relation to a partnership or relationship. Now, Saturn is going to change sign eventually, and that will happen on the 7th of March next year. So, 7th of March 2023, Saturn starts to transit in Pisces. It changes sign and symbolically as well, it changes house because it is going to transit in the eighth sign, which is in relation with house number eight in astrology. Now, house number eight represents your financial status or standing in the community, your relationship with the banks, for example, or any other financial institution. It also represents your potential to, um, to, to, to invest or to progress financially on a, a longer sort of period, uh, meaning that what you get when Saturn transits in Pisces is likely to have long-lasting repercussions. The fact that there is another planet transiting in Pisces, and that planet has been transiting in Pisces since 2012, uh, it is, uh, once again, a very slow planet. It's going to remain 14 years in Pisces. So, in Pisces, it is in its own sign which makes it perhaps more intense for you uh, to reach the ideal situation or position financially. It may have something to do with finances. But house number eight also represents your relationship with life as such, meaning what is life? Where do I come from and where do I go? 
after this life? Is there another life? Was there a previous life before my life, my actual life? That is the kind of question that goes with house number eight. Uh, and it also represents your connection, your natural connection with the spiritual dimension of life. So Saturn is arriving in Pisces to join forces more or less with this planet Neptune. And Neptune represents your dreams, your higher expectations, but it does not represent your ability to act on the basis of what you want, what you dream of obtaining. It just represents your tendency to contemplate the uh, possible effect of destiny and fate on the progress that you hope to make to reach uh, an ideal situation. So what would be for you the ideal situation? The answer that you're going to give is motivated by the energy of Neptune. So when Saturn arrives in this sign, as I said, it's going to join forces with Neptune to make, make it possible for you to harvest according to what you've done before, of course. You are going to get what you deserve. And according and in relation with what you hope for, it is what you are going to do about it that is going to make all the difference. Saturn will remain in Pisces for two and a half years. But there will be a conjunction between Saturn and Neptune at around the end and beginning of Aries and at the very beginning in Aries. And that is going to be, for you, an extremely important moment as far as that ideal situation that you may be wishing to reach. You will have the uh, potential to reach it. But as I said earlier, Saturn does not represent what you can just obtain like that. It represents work, efforts, and the uh, patience as well, the determination, the endurance that you may, that you are able to show so that you reach that goal. It may take two and a half years but as soon as Saturn enters this sign in March 2023, you will begin to feel the difference. You will begin to feel that you are about to be uh, able to use the right tools uh, to make it happen, to, to realize your dream and to reach that ideal situation you will have the potential. But that doesn't mean that you're going to use it. Unfortunately, it's very often like that. So in a very concrete manner, you reach your goal and realize your dream. Another planet I want to talk about is also very important. It's Pluto. Now, Pluto is at the moment still in Capricorn but it's nearing the end of the sign. It will actually enter in Aquarius on the year 23rd of March, 2023. But the transit is not going to last very long. Although Pluto is a very, very slow planet, it is the slowest of them all. It takes 248 years to revolve around the zodiac. But it is going to retrograde, just like I've explained about Jupiter. All planets do retrograde. So once it is in retrograde motion, it's going to go back in Capricorn. So that will be a short period that is going to last until the 11th of June, 2023. Now, while this lasts from the 23rd of March until the 11th of June, 
Pluto is giving you the first, more or less, the entree. Uh, it is also perhaps uh, the first warning. Because Pluto transiting in this sign transits your seventh house symbolically. And the seventh house, as I said earlier, when I talked about Saturn, represents the other person in your life, in your life the uh, personal relationships or the way you deal with that area, important area and at times quite difficult area of life. There will be something to change or there will be something that will change whether you want it or not. Because Pluto represents symbolically death and regeneration. So that means that something needs to end. It may be a relationship, but it also could be the way you deal with a relationship or the way the other person in your life deals with the relationship. There is a need to transform deeply, profoundly and forever that type of managing a relationship and managing the relationship as such if you are in a relationship but it's also managing the relationship in your head whether you are in a relationship or not as I said when I talked about Saturn you have an opinion on it and that opinion may need to change but it's not a change like Uranus is representing Uranus represents a change of direction but Pluto represents a deeper change, profound, something that has to do with the uh, great laws of cycles of life. So the first occurrence is the first warning. Pluto is going to show you what perhaps is not exactly right in the way you deal with a relationship or in the other person you live with or deal with because it could also be a professional relationship, a social relationship, but it is in any case a very important relationship to you. And at the same time Pluto is opposite your sign, so it, it is also showing you what you should change of yourself, transform deeply in order to mm, make room perhaps for a new way of dealing with personal relationship or a new relationship altogether. But it's probably not going to happen in 2023 because the transit is too short. The transit is there just to ring a bell, more or less. Ding, 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 ding. You know, to, uh, to warn you that something more important is going perhaps to happen if you don't do anything about it. And that second transit of Pluto in Aquarius will begin in January 2024 and the planet is going to settle in uh, Aquarius in uh, November 2024. So I will develop more on that subject in the videos that I will make for 2024 next year. But if you want to know more about it right now, of course, don't hesitate to visit our website once again and you will find the information to request an uh, order, a reading, or just a uh, simple answer to a question that you may have. Now, I will continue with the transits of Mars. Mars is a much faster object than all the objects I talked about. Uh, Mars takes about two years to revolve around the zodiac and it remains six weeks approximately in each sign. But this year, 2022, and in a few days, Mars is going to begin a transit in Gemini. And that will be on the 20th of August. So today is the 18th of August. So in two days, Mars begins its transit in Gemini. It is going to last for seven months and four days. It will end on the 25th of March 2023. All right, Mars in Gemini. 
Nothing to fear about. On the contrary, Mars in Gemini is in harmony with your sign. That's lucky, because this is an air sign, and this is a fire sign. So air and fire mix together quite well. So Mars in air is in the 11th sign from yours. House 11 represents your social life, your social environment, uh, that is geographical or physical and human as well. So your relationship, your friends, your acquaintances and other people around. Uh, it may indicate a period during which you will do more, you will need somehow to do more, you will feel more active and reactive uh, to help and to interact with the social community to which you belong. Social community or social circle, um, maybe just one friend, it could be more than that, but it has something to do with how you can value yourself socially. What can you do for others? And it may have a very strong influence as far as what others can do for you as well. So it also means perhaps that during this long period you could be helped by friends, or acquaintances or you know social relationships that you may have to of course favor the potential for you to succeed in various ways. And that may be according to what I've said about Jupiter and Uranus or Jupiter while it is here in Aries and um, that means that most probably, most probably, it's not guaranteed a hundred percent for sure, but it means that Mars is going to represent a very high um, quality tool or weapon perhaps to impose yourself to do what needs to be done to, to do the job properly in a very efficient manner. It indicates a better potential to control yourself and of course to have the best reactions at the right moment. So that's a plus naturally and it is going to help you. So take note of those dates because it is a long period and you will feel that you are more motivated altogether, especially to, uh, to, be, to be a good use, I would say, to others. And in turn, of course, uh, others will thank you in their own way to help you to achieve what you want to achieve. So it's going to be, a, to be like, a, like a very uh, active partnership, even though it may not seem like a real partnership or relationship as such, it will also be like that somehow. So, you know, get prepared. Because after that, Mars is going to transit in Cancer. And that transit is not going to last very long, it's going to last six weeks. And uh, so it will start on the 25th of March and it's going to end on the 20th of May. Of course, 2023. So I take 2023 away and I draw Mars. This is the sign that precedes yours, number 12. And number 12 is linked to house 12, naturally. House 12 represents the past, but it also represents the period during which you prepare yourself before the transit of Mars in your sign because that's going to be very strong as well. So prepare yourself as much as you can during this period to the transit in your sign because that is going to emphasize very strongly your natural drive and willpower and your natural ability to fight for what you want to achieve and to, to, you know, to, to act very strongly. But if you are not prepared properly, 
then perhaps you will not be able to control yourself as well. And if you are not able to control yourself, you may go overboard, you know. You may be tempted to do too much, to react too quickly, to be more impatient, and of course to accumulate a risk of various incidents and or accidents, even. They do happen, so they must be taken into consideration. Now, that transit of Mars in here, in Leo, in your sign, is going to last until the 10th of July. 2023. In your sign, it's going to really amplify the energy of your sign, the fiery energy of your sign. In fact, it's going to be like you become an Aries more than a Leo, because Mars represents Aries. But take it easy, because Jupiter will be in Taurus uh, together with Uranus. So what you want to change, perhaps, don't change too quickly. Think about it, you know, prepare. That's very important because during this period you could be a little bit too impatient on getting what you want to obtain. And then Mars is going to transit in Virgo. The transit is going to last until the 27th of August. And of course in Virgo it is in the second sign from yours. Second sign, second house money, but different from house number eight, because house number eight represents your material or financial relationship with society, whereas house number two represents what you earn. You know, it's uh, the, uh, the food house. So what you do to earn money in order to buy food, clothing, and, and to pay your, you know, daily sort of expenses, that's house number two. So when Mars transits in this area, it, it makes one more intense about defending um, material interests, financial situation. Because Virgo, on top of that, is the sign of the analyst. So you will be able to think before you act. And so to do it in a much better way. And that will be amplified by the fact that Virgo is a sign that is in harmony with Taurus. So Jupiter and Uranus will be in Taurus then, and they will act also to provide a better result from the work that you do, the uh, decisions that you make, and so on. Uh, then Mars is going to transit to house number three, or the third sign from your sign, which is, of course, Libra. And that's going to last until the 12th of uh, October, Mars in Libra. Third house, third sign, third house, communication. It is probably a period in which you will need and want to communicate more. And you may even be much more efficient at doing it, because between this sign and yours, there is what we call a sextile, which is a positive uh, aspect or connection. And Libra represents your potential to communicate, you know, being careful about what you say, how you say it, so that you don't create any conflict. And even more than that, if there is a conflict between other people and yourself, you will be much more efficient at dealing with it to defuse a bomb eventually that could, you know, blow up a relationship and make it difficult for you then. So that potential uh, to communicate the increased potential to communicate is always a good thing, of course, because whatever you have to express, to say, to share with other people, maybe your opinions, maybe your ideas, maybe anything, and to travel as well, and to meet people, uh, will seem to be much, much, I wouldn't say perhaps much easier, but much more motivating. There is some sort of incentive going with this 
uh, energy of Mars when it transits the third house. So you will be more active at wanting to communicate and to interact intellectually and perhaps physically as well with other people. And then Mars will transit in Scorpio. And that transit in Scorpio is going to last until the 24th of November. Scorpio is the fourth sign from yours. House number four. House number four, family, a home environment. But Scorpio is a water sign. And as you know, most probably, water and fire do not cohabit very easily together. Try, see what happens. So there is what we call a red line, once more. A discordance. So a discordant relationship between the two signs doesn't mean, once again, that a Leo person cannot live with a Scorpio one. No. It's just about the symbolic of the elements. But when Mars transits in Scorpio, it's going to make you stronger at wanting to impose what you want in life. And because it happens in the fourth sign, which is linked to the fourth house, it's on the family scene that it may occur. And the home environment. Imagine, for example, that you have some work to do at home, to repair something or to make something, whatever. Or just cooking and, and doing, you know, housework. Uh, you will be much more intense at doing all that. And perhaps more impatient as well. And that could trigger either conflicts with other people uh, or incidents as well, or accidents, domestic accidents do happen. So during this period, which is actually going to last for about six weeks, even a little bit more, just try, take it easy. Hold on your horses, as they say, you know, so that you don't go overboard. Otherwise, you will probably find that your ego is getting in the way of the uh, stability and harmony of a nice, pleasant house environment or home environment. And it can also indicate disruptions in the area where you live, not just your home as such. Uh, the area that is, you know, maybe the street, the building where you live, uh, or the um, city, or perhaps the, uh, the region, or even the whole country. The last transit of Mars will be in Sagittarius. No, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to write here 4th of January 2024. Now Mars is going to transit Sagittarius. Good news. Good news because you're going to end the year with a strong positive energy of that planet. Because this is a fire sign. Sagittarius is a fire sign. And yours, of course, is a fire sign, just like I said about Aries. So Aries and Sagittarius are in harmony with your sign. And they are both in harmony as well, Aries and Sagittarius. So that means that there will be a lot of fire and a lot of intensity physical and else, creativity, because that is happening in the fifth sign. House number five, love, romance, creativity. The enjoyments of life are also represented by house number five, the pleasures of life, uh, holidays, for example. Now, this is the period when Christmas and the New Year happen. So it's good news for you because you will have probably a lot of physical positive energy to deal with what needs to be dealt with during this period. So in my opinion, that could help you end the year in a nice manner so that you can prepare yourself for 2024, which is going to be a different year for sure in many, um, in many ways. To end this video, I will talk about Venus. 
Venus is going to transit in your sign, just like it does every year. And usually, the transit lasts for three weeks. But this year, 2023, the transit is going to last four months. And I can assure you that it is very good news for you. Now, Venus increases the charm and chance as well, luck. It increases your personal vibration, your charisma. It makes you more attractive and pleasant to others around you. They will have a better impression of you, a better appreciation of you as well. And that can be very helpful if you need extra, you know, favors, for example, to obtain something positive whatever that is, um, privately or socially or in any way. And that will, of course, once again, depend on your own chart. But the transit is going to exceptionally last for four months. So let's see when it is going to begin. It will begin on the 3rd of June, 2023. So that's Venus. And it will last until the 9th of October 2023 6, 10, 4 months 4 months and 6 days that's very interesting very strong now it means that you will be much more creative as well creation, procreation will be enhanced and your ability to love and to express your love for this or that or for a person or a situation or a project or whatever you know this planet is going to make it easier on you so whatever i said about the other transits that at times could become a little bit preoccupying because of the discordance that they create with your sign Venus is there to protect you for about four months. So you should, you know, prepare for that as well. Get, take note of the dates in your diary so that you know that during this period, it doesn't mean that you can do anything and, you know, a, and be okay. No, uh, you, don't, you don't go overboard. Venus is going to quiet you down as well. It's going to make you more sensitive about the feelings of other people and that will be felt by other people as well so they will in return probably have a better uh, appreciation of you and they will do things that they wouldn't in normal times do for you so it is quite interesting if you're an artist for example this transit is going to make you extremely more creative and that creativity is not going to be like something that you want to do and strive for. No, you will be serene and very calm to express your creativity in the way you do it usually. That's it. Before I go, I'd like to remind you about, first of all, three books that I have for sale on the uh, Amazon website in your country, wherever you are. And the first one is about learning astrology. If you're interested in astrology, you can, you know, be interested in learning. Um, this book is sold with 16 videos, one for each lesson that is in the book. If you buy this book, you will find the links to these videos under the title of each lesson. You can copy the links into your internet browser and you will immediately reach the lesson in question. But you can also send me the proof of purchase of the book and I will send you the list of the uh, uh, links so that you can easily click on each link to reach the videos that you want to watch. And the other book is about the transits, 
how to use the transits, how to analyze transits. This is what I've done since I began this video for you. Uh, but of course, this is not just according to someone's sun sign or zodiac sign. It's according to whole, the whole chart. And it teaches you a lesson after lesson or chapter of the, after chapter how to progress using each planet and understanding what each planet means when it circle around the zodiac according to someone's chart. And the third one is about karma. If you're interested about previous life and the next one as well, because there is a next one after this one, uh, well, this book will teach you how to understand what happened perhaps in your previous incarnation that you are bringing back in this one and that may be affecting or influencing or motivating you in such or such direction to make it possible for you to deal with that karmic load. Uh, it can be a very positive one, like it can be a less positive one. So triggering some difficulties to overcome. But very often the difficulties, we don't understand why they are coming around. Whereas with that karma study, once you understand that it, ha that it is linked with something that you need to learn in this present incarnation, then the difficulties become like a challenge that is much more interesting to, uh, to deal with than just normal difficulties, if you see what I mean. Uh, so there are other informations on the website. For example, you may want to uh, enroll in an astrology course. You may want to become a professional astrologer. We have all that prepared for anyone who wants to get involved in astrology and learn. That's very important because then it enhances your potential for self-development and also it enhances your potential to help others to understand others better. Thank you very much for your attention and for your interest in my work. And uh, before I go, I would like to wish you a very, very positive, successful 2023. It can be, but you have to roll up your sleeves because at times, of course, there will be some great efforts to make, but you will have that potential to succeed. Thank you. Bye.